Hey everyone, uh, welcome to this uh, visually understanding quantum computing playlist again. Here we are in week number five, and uh, as you already know, we will be using this tool again uh, to uh, help us uh, understand quantum computing. So let's just dive in now. So yeah, welcome to week five. And uh, if you recall, uh, in last week, I uh, talked about quantum superposition and the Hedamard gate, right? So, and we also uh, saw visually that the second Hedamard was uh, nullifying the effect of the first Hedamard. And uh, today I will sh uh, show you a little mathematics about it. And uh, let's uh, go for that. So just let's try uh, getting on the multiplication for the two header marks, you know, header mark applied on the header mark. So let us just substitute the matrix of these header marks. So as you know, uh, this is the following matrix that uh, header mark has. So I've just substituted the matrix for uh, the header mark. Now, if you just carry out this uh, mat uh, matrix multiplication, what you get is actually just this. and. Uh, you can see this half uh, outside the matrix. If I just take it, what we get is actually uh, some uh, this matrix. And if you just carefully observe this matrix, uh, you will notice that it is an identity matrix. So what happens is that uh, when uh, uh, two header marks come together, their effect is just like an identity matrix. All right. And, this, and the, as you know from your high school that uh, the identity matrix actually does not apply any effect on any particular matrix. And as you know, our uh, quantum state is also a vector, all right? So when applied to an identity uh, matrix, it actually does not get affected by it. And therefore, you, when you apply two header marks consecutively, uh, you end up getting in the state where you actually started. And that's what the effect that we saw previously. But again, uh, there are certain more properties about quantum gates. Uh, which also come into play uh, and is involved into this. Uh, but I will talk about it later when we have completed all of uh, the single qubit gates. And then I will come back to this point again. And I will tell you the more aspects, mathematical aspects of uh, why this uh, thing uh, is observed. All right. But uh, for now, uh, let's move on to our today's uh, new fresh gate. All right. So today we will be. Uh, working first with uh, the quantum knot gate. So as you might have guessed from the name, uh, it's the quantum analog of the classical knot gate. So let's see the symbol first. So as you might have uh, seen, it's just a block with X written in it. And that's how it's represented. And uh, talking about the matrix, uh, this is the matrix that actually represents the quantum knot gate. So again, uh, let's just do what we did last time. Uh, we will just apply x uh, on the zero k state first, so, and again just substituting uh, the matrix and vector for uh, x and zero k. So what you get is this, and again as you might have guessed, just uh, carry out the normal uh, matrix multiplication, and you end up getting this vector. And if you observe it carefully, it's just one k. So when you apply uh, the quantum knot gate or poly x gate on zero k, what you end up getting is just one k. So let's try the other way around now. Let's apply a quantum knot gate on one cat and see what happens. So again, substituting the matrix uh, and the vector, then uh, what you get is this uh, vector, uh, the result of the uh, the result of this uh, matrix multiplication, and then what you I just guessed again, it's just zero cat. All right. So when you apply the quantum knot gate on one cat, you end up getting the zero cat. So uh, that's it. So you can see it's uh, why it's called a bit flippy, right? Because when you uh, apply on a qubit which is in the zero cat state, the state transforms to one cat, and the same is true when you apply it on a qubit which is in the one cat state, it gets transformed to zero cat. So it just flips uh, from zero cat to one cat. So that's uh, 
the function of the poly x state or the quantum knot. Now uh, let's get to the second uh, uh, gate for today. This is the y operator, the poly y, and uh, this is the symbol. Now this is the matrix, and uh, from now here uh, the things will go a little complex. I mean, a literally complex because now uh, the complex numbers will come into the picture. So let's again just do the same standard thing, apply it on the zero case and see what we get. And uh, you can see uh, we end up getting in uh, this vector uh, with the second entry being complex. And uh, if I just again try to write it creatively, I can just take the iota out and uh, write this vector. And again, you can see this vector is nothing but one k. And uh, why this is happening? And uh, I'll not tell you what is actually uh, the function of y operator. And I, I, but I will show you the visualization uh, today in this week. But uh, I will uh, I'll just leave you with a question uh, in this week too. But before uh, doing that, let's try to go the other way around. Let's apply the y operator on the one ket and see what happens. So again, uh, the standard format, uh, just you know, uh, substituting the matrix and the vector, and then uh, let's see what we get. And we get this state. And again, if we try to do this, you end up getting this. So again, you can see it's a zero ket itself, but that you have that i negative i and uh, that will be uh, 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 you know I expect that you should look for the visualization that is coming up so now uh, we will be using the visualization so let's jump to the vs code and this is our little app that we built and uh, there's a tutorial on the channel if you want to see how it's built and uh, okay so as i told you uh, initially the qubit is in the zero case so if i apply uh, x directly then it means that it's equivalent to applying uh, the quantum knot directly on the zero cat okay so let's visualize this okay the block sphere has popped up you can again see it is started from the zero cat here and uh, it should return uh, to this one kit here according to the mathematics that we have seen so far. And uh, you can see it returned, so it behaved the way we expected it, the way mathematics expected it to behave. So let's uh, erase this. And now you can see that after applying uh, quantum knot once, uh, then we end up in the one cat state. So uh, if I apply quantum knot one more time, then it would be equivalent to applying the quantum knot on one cat state. All right. So now visualize this, and let's see what happens. According to the mathematics, it should again end up in the zero cat state. So let's see what happens. Okay, and it did not stop here. So actually, that's good. That's at least what we expected. That uh, should the result should not be the same as what it was for the previous case. So let's see where it stops. And uh, yes, as you can see, it finally ended up in the zero cat state. And so our mathematics was just correct and yeah so let's clear this and move to our y operator all right so let's apply y once it's equivalent to applying y on the zero state and then let's visualize this. and just try to note this uh, visualization 
it will it will come quite handy and you might be rewatching this part for some time after uh, this is over and you can see it it will end up here in one cache but uh, quantum not also ended up in one cat right you can you we just saw it right now that when we applied quantum not to zero cat it also ended up in one cat and when i applied a y uh, it also ended up in one cat so if they are having the same effect then why do we have two quantum gates here and uh, for that i want you to uh, that they are different actually they are different and that's that because of that iota that we got and uh, just pause this, try to see uh, the visualization again and you will uh, see that there is a difference in the visualization that you can pick up in the uh, quantum knot and the uh, Y operator here. So for now, just let me clear this and apply X uh, once. So it will just end up in the qubit being in the one k state and then uh, we shall apply Y. So, you know, this will be equivalent to applying the Y operator on the one k state. Okay, let's visualize. So you can see uh, the X over here in the green. It just signifies that uh, at the moment, uh, the transition that you are seeing uh, is being carried out because of this particular X operator. All right, this quantum knot. So we know this is going to end up here on one head. No surprises at all. But it's interesting to see what happens next. Now you can see Y here, it changed to Y. So now the Y has its effect. And let's see what it happens. And uh, note this visualization really carefully. It will come in handy. And yep, yeah, it's done. It will end up here in the zero cat state. So uh, the question for, uh, you know, you can just consider it assignment, homework, whatever you want to. So we saw visually that the X gate as well as the Y gate both ended up, uh, you know, switching the uh, the states, you know, from 0 cat to 1 cat and vice versa. So what is the difference between the two? Mathematically, we saw the difference that the matrices were not the equal. So there was a difference mathematically. But can you try to pick up the difference visually and uh, let me know in the comments and uh, definitely I will answer it next time in the next week and until then take care.